WWE Stomping Grounds turned out to be a good show. And that's a big surprise because everyone's expectations going into the show were very low. If you saw my predictions video, I had very low expectations for this card. And that's mainly due to because of how bad Raw and SmackDown have been the last few months since WrestleMania, really, when you go back. I would go back all the way till the week after Mania. The TV has been un- insufferable, and I'm sure it's going to be just as bad this upcoming week. But for tonight, on a Sunday, WWE put on a good show. So you have a kickoff pre-show, and you have everyone there on the pre-show, your typical cast of characters. You had uh, Charlie Caruso, I have to give a shout-out, looking great. Very busty tonight. have to give her credit for that. And you had them just previewing the card, and you go to the Cruiserweight Championship, which is going to be on the pre-show, which I thought the match put on the pre-show was going to be the match with the New Day against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. So they went with this, and I understand why, uh, because the tag match actually turned out to be a, a better match, I thought. But this was also good. I missed a lot of it, so I didn't get to see it. But I saw the ending. We have a new champ. Drew Gulak is your new Cruiserweight Champion. Why not? A Cruiserweight title doesn't mean anything. And everyone can win it and no one will watch. It doesn't matter who they have on that show. No one's going to ever watch that show. It is what it is, but uh, Drew Gulak's your new champ. And now let's get to the main card. So you have Becky Lynch walking out of uh, the pre-show. That's how the pre-show ended. And they announced that Becky's going to open the show. And that was really strange because why would Becky Lynch be in the first match? But then the way the show played out, it does make sense. So Becky comes out, then Lacey comes out, and you have your opening title match. And I have to say, this was a smart move to put on first because of how limited Lacey Evans is in the ring. Lacey Evans is not good at all. But when you start to crowd off, they're going to be really into Becky Lynch. And everything she does, they're going to be into. So this was a fine way to start the show. And it's only going to be a fast-paced match because I don't think Lacey Evans is very capable of going very fast. So it was slowed down a bit. Uh, you had Lacey working over Becky for the majority of the match. Becky made comebacks. She got a lot of offense in. Lacey got some more offense they went back and forth. Uh, you had some good moments here. But I would still say it was okay. It was definitely better than her Money in the Bank match. And the way it ended was the same way it ended at Money in the Bank, which made Lacey Evans look terrible. Lacey Evans taps quickly at Money in the Bank and at stopping grounds. As soon as she's into the summer, she taps out quickly. I don't get it. Why make her look that bad? You can at least give her a struggle before she taps out. She just taps out immediately, and Becky's now beating her clean twice. I do not see this feud continuing. At that moment, I didn't and how the show ended. I think probably next is a mixed tag match. So feud probably continues, and uh, we can't get those two feuds to end. Becky and Lacey and Seth and Baron. But uh, Becky opened the show here, and uh, she keeps her Raw Women's title. So you go to Kayla Braxton backstage wearing uh, a suit, like of a female suit. I don't know. Why would you Why want to see Kayla in a dress, damn it? Anyway, I'm joking. Uh, she's interviewing uh, a wrestler. I think it was Baron Corbin, if I recall. And then we go back to ringside, and our next match is a match I thought would be on the pre-show because it's basically a SmackDown match. It really doesn't mean much. This match, you had the New Day against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And they had a uh, very good tag match. It was good. It started off really with a lot of heat with uh, Zayn and Owens taking out uh, Big E, and then they worked on Xavier. It looked like there might be a squash match. Are they going to break up New Day? That was going through my, uh, my mind. And it continued to progress. And the way I'm thinking, I think Big E is going to turn eventually. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think eventually you will see Big E turn on the New Day. And they had Xavier take the pin here. So I think that's where we're going. I don't know if they're going to keep the belt on Kofi, but I think that's uh, the direction. It is good to give Owens and Zayn a win. They're going to push Owens more than they push Zayn, and they should. Uh, you had a good ending here. You had to get really excited. You had uh, Biggie and Sammy go to the outside, but then uh, Kevin Owens pins Xavier Woods in the middle of the ring. He gets the win. Good win for KO. I think just probably the way it was set up leads to Kevin Owens challenging Kofi Kingston because he got the victory. Sammy Zayn is still aligned with him. And he was originally scheduled to face Kofi Kingston in Saudi Arabia, but he didn't go, and that's why they caught Ziggler in this uh, feud with Kofi. But I think probably Kevin and uh, Kofi's the next feud for uh, Kofi Kingston. But good match here on uh, Owens and Zayn with a good win. They definitely needed something. So then you go to the United States title match, and I thought would steal the show, and I don't know if it did. I can't say this was the best match of the show. I can, however, however say good match, very good. I enjoyed it. I wish this was an NXT match because I think it would just have been amazing there, but I still had a good match. We know Samoa Joe is 
great on the mic. He's probably the best talker in the company right now when it comes to promos. In the ring, he is older. He's in his 40s now, and he's nowhere near the guy he once was. This is not the Samoa Joe in Ring of Honor, even early TNA days. We're not going to see that Samoa Joe anymore. And under WWE's PG rules, we can't see that. We can't see that killer, that ruthless, psychopath, sick guy who chokes you out while you're bleeding and it's just uh, just vicious. We're not going to see that guy. The closest we ever saw to that Samoa Joe was when he feuded with Brock Lesnar briefly a couple years ago. But Joe here was good, and Ricochet is great. This was a showcase for Ricochet. They didn't really have a lot of high expectations for Ricochet. They want him to be a top star. And I really think once they called up Ricochet and Aleister Black together, the plan was to push both of them. And I think they wanted to go more with uh, Black, and I think he will probably be the bigger star, I, I assume. But they really want to go some, somewhere with Ricochet. And I think the reason why they had him team up as a team, which I was never a huge fan of because I think their characters are different, was to give them both something to do. And they are finally starting to push Ricochet. He is your new United States champion. Good win over Joe. Very enjoyable match. And he has a big future. After the match, they go backstage and everyone celebrates with him. They show uh, Triple H hugging him. It's strange. They showed Charlotte Flair with all the BBC. He says, I guess they had to get Charlotte feature, but why? I don't know why Charlotte was there, but they had um, all the wrestlers and he's hugging them. And then we go to... Heavy Machinery, who was there, and it was funny, show Otis uh, congratulating him, then they go to back to the stage, and you have Heavy Machinery make their entrance, so it was a good transition, Heavy Machinery comes out, and it's a SmackDown tag team titles, and the fans were at their best here, this was the match they were most interested for, and that was 100% due to Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan is a superstar, in Washington, he was a babyface, and Daniel Bryan did not even try to fight it. He played babyface. He was over as hell. He was great here. They loved everything he did. They were so into him. He was just the star of this match and the star of the show, really, because he was, without question, the most over guy. And he did this a while ago. One time when he was in Washington and SmackDown, he was praising the crowd and ripping the rest of the country. I guess that's what he's going to do. It's kind of like Bret Hart. He's a heel in all of the United States but a baby face in Canada. I think that's going to be what Daniel Bryan is going to be a heel in every other state in the United States. All 49 other states, he's a heel. In Washington, he's a baby face. And I think that actually uh, works. And it was kind of, I don't know, I thought it was kind of sad to see Heavy Machinery boot out of the building. Uh, Otis is really entertaining. They shouldn't be booing him that much, but they, uh, they booed him and... It was a lot of fun. Though. This match was a thrill to watch. Daniel Bryan doing those yes kicks and Otis just taking it. It got really exciting. It was a very enjoyable match. This was a great showcase for Heavy Machinery as well. Uh, this was a hell of a exciting match to see. And this would have been a great match just to watch live. I kind of wish this match uh, is something that if you're in the crowd, you'd love it. And still being on TV, it was still very good. It was very exciting. Daniel Bryan pins Tucker with the roll-up. Uh, it was basically an inside cradle, so they're going to protect Otis. They're definitely going to push Otis. And if they ever break up, as I've said this many times in the past, Tucker's fucked. Because Vince McMahon obviously loves Otis, and Otis definitely has a lot of charisma, and that's going to screw uh, Tucker because I don't know what they're going to have for him. But uh, Brian and Rowan stole your SmackDown Tag Team Champions in a good match. So backstage, they go to AJ Styles with Giles and Anderson. They're doing a two-sweet thing with Ricochet. I'm not sure what they're building up to. It could be AJ and Ricochet. If you get that, like, at a SummerSlam, I'm down for that. My God, those two will tear it up. That match, I hope we get that maybe at a... Save that for SummerSlam. I'm going to put it at Extreme Rules. That'd be great. I don't know what we're going to do with AJ, though. Just, I mean, if it's not that, I don't really have much for him right now. So next, we go to Bailey defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Alexa Bliss. And Alexa Bliss, can she, she wear that... I don't know if it's a Maleficent-inspired costume or ring attire every single week because she looks unbelievable. It's insane. I've gone on about how attractive this woman is. It's uncomfortable how pretty she is. She wore that once at Evolution. I remember her. She wore it on the the pre-show red carpet at Evolution, and I thought she looked like the sexiest woman alive. She looked insane, and she wore it again here, and she, she is such a gorgeous woman. Uh, and it was great seeing her back in the ring. The match itself wasn't any good. Uh, Bailey came out, and Bailey and Alexa were. I think Alexa was slightly more over than Bailey. I don't blame her because Alexa's been booked a lot better than Bailey has. But they uh, also with Alexa, she has a 365 coming out immediately after Stomping Grounds. 
and it's actually airing on the WWE Network because I do my review, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I will review that soon. That will be up later this week when I uh, see that, and I'll review, and I'm looking forward to it. The match they have here, look, Alexa is very limited in the ring. She's not good. She didn't take much bumps, and I hope she doesn't because I don't want to see this woman have any more head trauma. It's sad. They don't need to see this beautiful girl like go through serious concussion issues later in her life having CTE because she's had a couple of concussions. But when you look at her ring work, it's just not up to speed. Bailey's a good worker, but, I mean, she couldn't get much out of Alexa here. This was a slow match. And I think the reason is, is because of her concussion issues, Alexa has become very limited. She had to dominate the majority of the match because I don't think she can take much abuse in the ring. Uh, you have the spot, which I cringe. Bailey does this to Alexa Bliss every single time they wrestle. In which Bailey does a sunset flip. And as she does it, she... Instead of landing in the middle of the ring, she has her opponent land headfirst backwards into the turnbuckle. And I think that's a dangerous move in general. And don't do it to anybody, but especially don't do it to someone who's had multiple concussions. I don't know why they keep having Alexa take that spot. It's just so stupid. But they do it again. I just cringe every time I see it. Eventually, the match ends with uh, Bailey uh, winning after Nikki Cross messes up. They had Bailey attack Nikki Cross with a sunset flip. And then Nikki Cross screws the match over with Alexa. I don't know what they're doing anymore with those two. We may as well just split them up. Um, let them go their separate ways. I don't think they have much chemistry. It's kind of boring now. Um, and I think uh, Alexa probably feuds maybe with Becky. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know how they're going to use Nikki Cross anymore. I don't need to see them, her and Alexa as a team anymore. Uh, but Bailey gets the win. She finally beats Alexa Bliss in a pay-per-view match. She's been buried by Alexa Bliss for years. She finally gets one over her. I don't think it makes up for that. Two two years ago, and they had that stupid kendo stick match on a pole when Alexa squashes Bailey. That this is your life segment, but uh, Alexa or Bailey finally gets one over Alexa on pay per view and keeps her belt. Next, we go to Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre. Um, this was a good match. This was not a great match. It was definitely better than a WrestleMania match. It was really fun at first. Roman does a dive, then it gets really boring, and then it gets exciting again when Shane McMahon comes in. He does his coast-to-coast. Roman recovers, eventually makes a comeback, mounts a big one, gets the win over Drew McIntyre after two speeders, and I think next is Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon. They're doing a handicap match. They did a promo later in the show that Drew uh, pissed off. They're setting up a handicap match tomorrow night on Raw. I think probably this leads to Roman Reigns and Shane McMahon. Some sort of big gimmick match at uh, Extreme Rules, and Roman finally takes down Shane. Next, the WWE Championship inside a steel cage, Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler. The first 99% of this match I did not give a shit about had a great finish. Had one of the best cage finishes I've seen in a while. I'd say this is my favorite steel cage escape finish. Not This is nowhere near, a, like not in top 50 cage matches. Not It was not good at all. But in terms of a finish, it was probably my favorite innovative finish since like Brett and Owen when uh, Brett tied up Owen's arms and he climbed over the cage above Owen. So he had uh, Dolph escaping the cage. He looks like he's going to win it through the door. And then Kofi just does this great dive all through the ropes of the door outside on the mats and lands like on his body on the mat, which looked a bit painful. But he gets the win. He keeps his belt. It was a great ending. The match itself was nothing. Uh, it was such a snore fest. Dolph Ziggler is so done. No one cares about this guy. Uh, I wish he'd just go. But match was, uh, it was a, not a good match. but had a really great finish. Main event, you have uh, Seth Rollins against Baron Corbin. So Lacey Evans is the referee, and the opening of the match is fucking horrendous. The fans are booing the shit out of the match. They're chanting everything under the sun. They're chanting for AEW. They're chanting for Becky. They're chanting for Daniel Bryan. They're chanting for CM Punk. They're chanting everything. They hate it. And then Seth makes a comeback, but then Lacey announces a no DQ, or sorry, no count out first. Then a no DQ, Corbin's beating him up. Becky makes the big save. Eventually, uh, because Becky took out Lacey, another referee comes in the ring, and it becomes Seth and Baron. Seth gets the win. He hits Corbin with the curb stomp. He retains his title, and the show ends with uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch embracing. They're a happy couple. Uh, they're both champions, and it ends, you know, the two of them are team up. I think the next feud is probably a mixed tag with uh, Becky and Seth against Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans, but they're going to keep the two of them as a duo, and I don't know, maybe they're going to have them feud with Triple H and Stephanie because they're definitely going to keep that a big thing, and they're going to use it in a way to keep make it a storyline, but uh, they're definitely going to be like p- portrayed as a power couple. So Seth and Becky stand tall at the end of the show. It was a good show. It was a show in Tacoma, Washington. Everyone had low expectations. It was supposed to be a throwaway show. 
and it turned out to be a good WWE pay-per-view.